talk about the ingenuity of the Japanese. Here they are. They have used um, these are these are the old blocks that were used for the foundation of houses down here. You see them down here? Okay. So these actually came with the old style houses. You can see these are all hand chiseled. I don't know if you can see the marks of the chiseling here. Someone hand chiseled each and every one of these blocks. And you'll see them stacked up all over the place. Now, now as you can see, they don't have blocks here. What are these? Right here, this is koala. This is the roofing, old roofing tile in on the house, right? So here's one that's loose. This roofing tile basically interlocks. Um, it's it's um, you know it's made out of clay. They you know and they they once you put on a roof in Japan, they're pretty much there. So it's kind of really cool that this farmer and the guy who owns this rice field right here would have done all of this, okay? You know, it wouldn't have been the city workers, it wouldn't be anything else, it would have been the farmer land. All of these, all of these, all of these um, um, lands here are basically um, individual farmers and uh, they do all the work. They don't get paid for the work. They, you know, when, when as a family members, as we help out, we don't get paid for the work. The communal farmer is the most profitable and the most sustainable farming system in the world. So all of these people saying, oh, these little, this that can't feed the world, you're wrong. Japan is a good example of how one guy plants the rice with his, when he gets his family to come out, he maintains his field, he maintains the side, he takes care of the property aligning it, and um, all of this, you know, he, he does it himself. You can see his footprints, footprints in the rice paddy. And isn't this beautiful? This little village right here, no more. This little village is all independent. There would have been literally, you know, literally hundreds of villages like this along the coastal Japan that have been wiped out. These are the kind of villages that will not return, okay, because they just don't have the cash flow. They don't have the leverage. They don't have the... The ability to you know to bring it back this guy is obviously very wealthy look at this you know he's probably the farmer he probably owns a lot of look at the size he's got the, the, the classic walled house right he's got the huge buddhist and the shinto shrines here look at that old oak tree you know he has a little castle it's like a moat i love this there you can see the koala that i was talking about the roof on the roof there that's that same tile that was used. And this guy here, this was probably all, probably, well maybe not, a good chance that a lot of this is his extended family. Um, you know, grandparents and sons. There's his barn on the end, just like ours. But again, you know, they, they have hedges here. You know, uh, Japan reminds me a lot of, um, of Rome. You know, I love Rome. I love Roman history. And, you know, and the similarities of Rome and Japan are significant, and no one's ever written on it. It'd be a great book for someone to really explore. Um, but basically, some of the highlights would be the, the customs and the culture. Uh, and I think there is evidence that Roman coins were found in China. So, you know, maybe there'd be an interesting story to talk about the first Roman in, in Japan or the first Roman in China. Because ultimately, here's a barn. Look at this barn. This is great. Actually, it's a new one. It's all actually aluminum siding. He keeps his bamboo there, his other things. He's got his vegetable bar gardens all in here. This is just for himself. He doesn't sell this. This is, look, he's got his, look. Those are flowers. This is, these are flowers for the Buddhist room, right? This is for, they, they don't have to pay for flowers. They put flowers in their, in their butsudan. It's called butsudan room. There's some over there. They'll cut these flowers and use them. Oh, there's some over there too. So this all, here's his vegetables here, you know? There's a spinach, there's his carrots, more um, cauliflower. Um, over there's potatoes. Even potatoes here are very expensive. You wouldn't believe a little bag of potatoes like five bucks, six bucks. So um, here's his uh, probably peach, or this is either peach or, or this could be khaki, persimmon, persimmon, probably persimmon trees. He's got one, he's got two, he's got some fruit trees around here. So he's pretty much self sustained. So here's a family. And he probably, you know, he does all of this. I don't, you know, maybe he gives some to um, the grocery store. I don't know. I mean, he's got a lot of shit growing here. Um, I don't know how, I mean, he probably gives it to his entire neighborhood. Um, and then here they're growing wheat. 
So wheat on this side, look at that, wheat on this side, rice on this side. Isn't that a beautiful, little, little field. Again, community farmers. This is, all of this isn't Monsanto or all these huge. These are small, family owned. Each one of these tambos is owned by a family. And, you know, they may, you know, like in my community, they may form a co-op. They just decide to form a co-op. Um, so some of the similarities of Rome, let me talk about that. One is the canal systems. Japan has probably the most extensive irrigation canal systems in the world, right? Look at this. It's very Roman. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and they're all ready. They can, they can water their fields at any time. You'll notice here they've got a ditch. You see the ditch here? This is because the root of the wheat is very shallow, right? And they put a ditch because the fastest form of, um, of basically taking water off is, uh, is um, condensation, right? Or uh, evaporation, not condensation, evaporation. So by having a, a, a ditch here, what happens is it drains from the top layer, it keeps the top layer drier, right? Um, and um, if I could pull up one, I would, but there's nothing, there's none that is by themselves to show you. But ultimately, you can see that the, um, the root system, here, we'll go down here, grab one here, I'm gonna get muddy here, right? This one here, all right? So look at this root system, right? Look how shallow this root system is. This root system is, this is a wheat root system. And look, there's no wheat on it, so this, they're not gonna miss this here. But their root system is super shallow. So they build this trench here in order to get the water, because otherwise, you'll see wheat fields. Let's see if I'll find one here. Well, this is a good example. You notice, like, right here, it hasn't grown. Like, right in this area here, look, look this area right here. You see this area? This area here, the reason why it's dead is because the drainage, it was too swampy there. It was too wet, right? And if you saw my father-in-law's wheat field, <laughs> the entire thing looks like this. It's embarrassing. So he had drainage problems. Um, he was, I, was, I asked him to ask my wife, you know, what was the, what was the deal? And uh, basically, um, that was, that's why I learned about it. So here's more, look at that. I love, I love this. So here's the um, more irrigation. The other thing that's very, 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 very Roman is the onsen. The onsen is the same thing as the Japanese, is the, is the uh, old, you know, what the, um, the old um, um, uh, spas would have been like, where all the men get together, all the women get together. And, um, you know, basically, um, there, I go to a place called Mikuni Onsen all the time, and, and it's just great. You have got, you, you bathe first, and then you get in, then once you bathe, you actually, which you do on a stool with, with water, then you get into the hot onsen, and men are sitting around talking business, talking shop, you can go into a sauna and so on. And, you know, these are integral. We go usually every week to this thing, you know, to an onsen spa. Um, I take my sons there, usually I may go with them today. Um, it's a great bonding experience for father and sons. You wash them, they wash your back, you know, it's just a bonding, right? And uh, I can imagine back you know, two, three hundred years ago where you'd have two lords disputing, disputing that maybe once they formed an alliance, they would go drink sake, you know, they'd form an alliance, they'd probably go drinking together, and as a way to really, um, this is something I like about Japan, to really bond, they would go to onsen. This is crows. Damn crows, right? So the crows picked up this garbage somewhere Right, here's another example of a bad, here you go, bad drainage. You can see the drainage is full there, it's too much water, and for this end part right here just didn't, you can see the weeds growing up. Um, you can see the difference, obviously where there is, you know, on there. Um, see, this is more of the village, so this village is actually a little bit bigger, kind of extends. Such a beautiful, beautiful country. That gazebo over there is uh, is like built like a flower. I don't know if you noticed that. The suisin or the daffodil is the uh, flower of Fukui, and uh, they've got these massive daffodil fields like on on the mountain, which I should go to. I've got some early pictures. If you look through my pictures on um, on uh, Facebook, I've got lots of pictures. But ultimately, ultimately, it's a beautiful. There it is. There's this, looks like the daffodil there. 
One of the things I don't like is a corrugated iron. This is that corrugated iron place. It was a business. It was a garage or something. And um, just there. There's another business. Obviously, this is a materials brick business or something. It's got his radio tower. Oh, there's my school I used to teach over there. Okay, I know where I am now. Actually, which way do I want to go? Actually, yeah. I don't know how far I can go down there. I'm going to go down that way because that's a main road. They go flying down it, and I'm headed over there to my wife's. So I've never done this walk before, but I told my wife, go ahead and you know drop off. Uh, Tommy didn't want to walk to school, so I was like, fine. I'll walk with Mikey. So I took Mikey to school, and now I'm walking to um, to pick up you know pick up the car so I can pick her up later. Yeah, these are little. These are prefab. All this is prefabs. Looks like this business is out of business. Don't see many people there. They put barbed wire. These are the steel frame. They do the cross ribbing. It's a big open area there. It was a garage. I think I love this. I mean, this is Japan. Why would you put? I mean, they must have had, I, I find it very hard to believe that they had theft, right? But they put barbed wire, which is very strange for Japan to see. I've never seen barbed wire before. But this is like, this is an old barbed wire. This is the nasty, give you hepatitis, you know, rusty barbed wire from hell. So, in, in like, right, if you're really going to steal something, why wouldn't you just go around here? It's like, I don't get it. Why go through all this ex expense of putting this up and then not do it right? So obviously it is a business. There's a business name and probably they're not doing that well. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this talk on uh, a little bit of Japan and I don't know how windy it is. I'm probably got lots of wind in it. Apologize, but you know, this is the country I love. This is the country of my kids and my wife. My amazing wife, my most beautiful, ugh, she's the best woman in the world. Well, best woman to me in the world. And I'm very lucky to have such an amazing mom to uh, two such amazing boys, Tommy and Mikey. So you probably see my Tommy and Mikey series. You know, I look forward when I get old. Uh, you know, the reason why I videotape all this because I know in the future we basically will be videotaping all the time. Just like, you know, I'm a, I'm a pioneer here videotaping all the time. There's no reason why I couldn't have a virtual camera always somehow videotaping me where I can just say, record. Here's more of the canals. Isn't that beautiful? Listen to the sound of the water. To me, that is... Ah, that takes all the worries off me. Just listen. I could just sit here. I don't know. Something about the sound of water is just the most amazing sound. Maybe you just think I'm crazy. Hear the more burning their stuff. Bad, bad Japanese. More canals here. Just canal, little little irrigation. Not canals, their irrigation system. Their irrigation system is as complex as the as the Romans ever built. And it still works. The farmers are still using them. And um, oh here's a good example of a bad field. Look at this one. <laughs> it's like you can see how much water's in here and how how green it is, which means it's been there a long time. You know, they dug it pretty deep, they couldn't get the water out of there. Where this one here, his neighbors, looks beautiful. What a beautiful wheat field. And they're gonna start harvesting these wheat fields, and that's fun to watch too, so I'm looking forward to that. You know, spring in Japan is my favorite time. You know, it's just awesome. You got the everything growing, the rice, the system for planting rice is really is really cool. Uh, the community aspect, everyone coming together and no one saying how much you pay me. It's just it's a it's part of the responsibility. If you're 
you know, I married a rice farmer's daughter just as, as a, if, a, if I would have married, a, uh, you know, a Texan cow farmer's daughter, I'd be out there helping him and working the cattle and, and everything else, and I wouldn't be saying how much you pay me. That's just part of my duties, right? So um, the same thing is very, you know, the, 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 the cow farmer and the rice farmer are their counterparts. And both of them are respected as really, you know, in their communities as really the, you know, the, the rancher and the rice farmer are, are equals.